Take a good look at this odd shaped design for a new construction project. What is it that you think you're looking at? Does it look like some sort of newfangled design for an outdoor soccer field? Definitely not. Although, that would be pretty cool too. Based on the title, most of you have already surmised that this is a new construction for crocodiles. But that's only half the story. Once you learn the details, you'll see that this is the most insane croc pond ever designed. And I can't wait to show it to you. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. Oh man, so we're hanging out here at Crocodile Kyle's new facility. Uh, it's under construction, here he comes right now. Um, this is really exciting guys because in addition to the sanctuary we're going to do, this is also going to be Kyle's private uh, facility. Uh, hi Kyle, I'm hey, just talking guys. to everybody. Um, so what do we got here man? So this is the first mock-up. So uh, this is the design of the Crocodile Pond, so one of the five that we're doing initially. Um, it's cool, it's like adult Lego, so it's a big jigsaw puzzle. And what exactly you know? is this? It's called sheet pile? Yeah, now so this... these are the vinyl sheet piles, so essentially like a seawall. Okay, um, very cool. So what we do with this is actually, this is just a mock-up to get an idea of how these will be mapped out and how they'll fit together. Okay, but and the, of course the size of the pond. Yes. All right, so. The, uh, the permanent sheets will actually be a tan color, so it'll be a lot na more natural looking, um, but also it'll be 16 foot sheets. So I'll have them eight foot below the sand, and then I'll have an eight foot water line. Okay. So it'll be the, the pond will be eight foot deep. So these are there's gonna be sixteen foot walls of this. Yeah. Yes. So, so basically in the ground. ground. So check it out. So, so this this one piece will be sixteen feet long, and Steve over here from BDI BDI, uh, yeah, construction, BDI construction, they have a technique where they they'll drive this deep into the soil. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then to my understanding you guys are then gonna excavate the pond. Correct. So th they'll drive it all down He'll dig it and the whole reason you're doing this is because guys if you go back and look at some of the videos We've done with Kyle at the old facility you and see they made all this. Yes. This was a square pond that you guys saw They that. made all these little wallows He wants to minimize the ability for you want to stop the crocs yes. from digging towards the uh, The perimeter fences. Yeah, it's just so so many maintenance issues with that, you know, okay. I mean at some point, they'll just keep digging and digging and digging the longer they're in that pond. Okay. So with um, this, you're selecting a permanent shape of the pond. Correct. Exactly. But the beauty of it, too, is with this, it'll be 16 foot down. So it'll essentially be 8 foot underneath the bottom of the pond. So essentially, they'd have to dig down 8 foot right. below the bottom of the pond. But the beauty of that, too, is they'll have a sandy bottom. So it'll, it'll still be a natural pond, per se, but it'll just hold the shape. Right. It'll keep the integrity of the pond. And then on top... Uh, on top of this structure, you're going to have a, a gate. Now, this is interesting. This is where Kyle was talking about his old place being the R&D facility, right? He is a little bit of a mad scientist when it comes to designing these ponds for his crocs. Um, some people might go, they're a little over-engineered, but you, bit. you want it this way so that there's little to no maintenance. So yep. he's going to be able to keep the crocs inside the pond. There'll be a fence here, okay? But you like giving the crocs land, so explain to them what, what are these sections here? So these will be the ramps. Okay. So essentially we're going to have a natural sandy ramp. We'll have a big cheat pile or a big uh, like telephone pole laid across horizontal that they'll roll over and there'll be a sand. So the, the, the pole will actually keep the sand up there. Okay. So they'll come up here and it'll be a smooth ramp all the way up and then they can come out here. Um, there'll be gates here so I can actually shut them in the ponds whether there's a hurricane coming I can lock them in the ponds that much more secure they'll be safer in the water um, exactly and then uh, if we're doing any maintenance yard work collecting eggs again it's a very safe environment will the so gates like the gates like flip up like no, that guillotine. Or will like guillotine yeah guillotine they don't need gates. to be necessarily too tall we just need them just uh, three four foot high just to keep them in while we're working right um, are you still thinking about getting those uh, automatic lawnmowers of course oh yep. my god so, so so, so wait, I'm hold on, wait, what? Yeah, listen so I've looked to at several companies. Again, I'm looking at as far as the least maintenance as possible. So with the gates, we'll shut them in the ponds. Um, and another beauty of that is because 
if we do have a robotic mower in here, essentially a mower like a, a Roomba per se for, for grass. So you press the button and it will mow this whole yard. But obviously with a crocodile, if we have it that yeah. way, then they they'll, they'll grab it and yeah. pull it in the water. So we'll shut them in the gates, let the mower do its thing, and then once the mower's back on its station, open the gates so, back up. So the idea is it, a maintenance-free crocodile Correct. pond. That's Private it. Con I First love, off, hold on. Oh, you love what? I'm I sorry. love natural ponds. I love how they can, they can shape them, and they can also be on the soil. But also, it's so much maintenance. Right. So I want to be able to enjoy the, the the new sanctuary, the new house. Right, and the good thing about the new, you'll still have that look when you guys come visit us at our sanctuary. That'll we'll have a natural, natural look, and we're going to do a lot more. This is basically your private facility where there's going to be some breeding uh, projects mm -hmm. going on. Of we're going to be doing some. It's kind of the off display area. And of, I'm of not asking you to be boastful, but but sort of like. There's no pond being built like this no. anywhere. Is this like no? Seriously, who? Is I'll this say it so most, he doesn't. Hit. Is this the most insane? I, like I, I, I'm telling you, um, to be perfectly honest, when I first met Kyle and I saw his, <laughs> the place that will become our new sanctuary, I thought that was pretty much one of the nicest croc facilities on uh, in the country. Um, and then after you know a while, uh, Kyle kind of was like, oh, I want to do it better. Uh, and so you can see what he's doing. This this, this will be so far up beyond what anyone else, else else is doing privately for these animals, and in most cases for zoos as well. It's great to have people that are committed to these animals. We need people like Kyle, who love the animals and are fortunate enough to be able to do this. Um, How you know, big that's is it? fantastic. How, what are the dimensions? Yeah, what do you got? Here? So this is so the pond itself, not the ramps. The pond itself is 50 foot by 35 foot. And, and eight foot deep. Yes, and eight foot deep. And to give you an example, I'll probably only have a pair of Niles in this entire enclosure. And the enclosure itself is 130 feet long by 48 foot wide. Yeah, guys, don't forget. So there'll be fence here, right? Because we're going to keep them in this area when he wants to. Uh, but this is all going to be land. Yeah, this here. is all land here. So this is all land. Come check this out. And before we walk over here, let me show you this. So if you notice, the pond is off to this side more. So this is my little mock-up here. So this is going to be the elevated walkway no along way. the whole, whole, uh, the whole along all the enclosures. Area. Yep. Right. So all the enclosures, if you guys can imagine, this is a boardwalk that you'll be able to drive a cart Eight on. Eight foot wide. So I can feed off the golf cart. Yeah. And it'll be elevated so you can look down on the enclosures. And also, it gives them just enough space to come out of the water here and feed and go back in. Well, let's bring Steve in. Steve, come here, man. Steve's the uh, contractor who's got the job of doing this. And uh, Steve's got nice headgear. I, I like what he's wearing. Uh, Steve, what's up, man? We're doing, doing a little video. Um, have you ever been asked to build something like this? Now this is the first, I think, for uh, me and the sheet pile company. It's the, uh, <laughs> you know, a uh, first endeavor for everybody here. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting, right? Uh, you as a contractor, it's kind of fun when you get to do something completely <laughs> left of center. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's an experience, and uh, there's a lot of foot of sheet pile here that we'll be doing as right. far as the pond, and he's making some changes here that we may be doing some other areas. So um, as far as the sheet pile manufacturer goes, I think this will be their first for an application. What what are some of the, the kind of challenges that you guys have come into uh, come into play here with dealing with animals? I mean, you're, you've been learning a lot. In fact, you went over to the old place and finally got to see yeah. what exactly is going to be living in here. And you, yep. you know, you're a lay person. You don't yep. know about crops. You know about <laughs> construction. Did it really uh, shape the way you now go into this when you saw how those animals are? Ah, uh, night and day. I mean, yeah. uh, I didn't really have a great understanding of what the animals were, and when we got into the other property to see the, the you know, the amount of force that that animal could produce, um, I understood Kyle's concerns at that point of the depth of the sheep pile, um, thickness, sizing. Um, so a lot of that was more well understood upon seeing the animal in action, and um, kind of gave me a whole different take on constructing here, um, as far as what precautions to take, how deep we should go, and, gotcha. and what. You know. It was it was pretty funny because the engineer came over as well, and he all of a sudden he started adding crazy 
things to it to make sure they keep they stay in thicker walls all sorts of stuff because <laughs> yeah. he saw that the giant saltwater crocodile that's 14 foot and he's like we gotta go bigger fences yeah yeah stronger definitely. fences stronger walls <laughs> well let's uh, let's have a wander over here a little bit and see because this is this is just the mock-up there'll actually be a yes. structure here won't there is it gonna yes, be, so a, new be structure? a garage here all right so there's gonna be a garage here on this pad but let's go out they're so, gonna have a lot of space though it's amazing oh, like, let's, they're let's, gonna have oh hold on he wants to show us something else the uh, far side of the land area, you can see how long it is. Oh, I and see. And also, guys, is I want to have a secondary pond. You know, it's just like people. You can't be around the same person all day long, every single day. What do you mean? What? You don't like hanging out with me all no, day you long? you drive me <laughs> nuts sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you. I am. But no, so I want to do a secondary pond, whether she wants to nest over there and have, keep the babies in the ponds. I'm setting this up that I, I want to be able to give them the opportunity to rear their own young. So I want to have a secondary pond over there that if she wants to nest over there and breed, or not breed, but rear her young far from the male. She and also if there's a secondary containment, if they're ever fighting, I can lock her in over there or him. Just um, giving the animal an out. Just giving, yeah, just giving them different, different, um, options. Pretty, yeah, different options and just enrichment in general. Right. You know, there's, I put channels on either side just to give them a, an idea, a, a feeling of, the enclosure being that much bigger. So they have so many different routes they can go. They can go through the pond, they can go on the left side, the right side. And of course you're gonna this plant pond. this with, with plants and shade and it, it'll look, and you know, once these things grow, the the kind of man-made element of the pond will be will be disappeared. Yes. We, yeah. You guys remember the videos. Remember when we put the Nile Crocs in the first pond? If you go back and check that video out, Tom will do something where you can yeah. do that. And then watch the second video where in six months everything grew. So just imagine how lush this will look and how happy the animals yes. are going to be. And that's the goal. I want to make sure this is still very naturalistic. Um, but it's just far less maintenance. And gotcha. this, is, this is where we're at today. All right, so let's go walk over here, guys. This is awesome. This is gonna be, uh, I mean, it's amazing. You know what I mean, what, what he's doing. All these trees right here, these Robolini trees will be in there. It's cool. just like a nursery here, so we'll pull all them, put them in the enclosure. That's awesome. He bought those a while ago, planted oh, yeah. them, yep. and knew that he was gonna do development of this property. Well, so this is, this is years in the making. I got this property three years ago. And literally every single day of my life since then, I've been working on this property and designing it. So many revisions, so many uh, cost cuts, I guess. Uh, you know, we, went, we looked at uh, concrete walls, we looked at fiberglass. Concrete was way too expensive, fiberglass was way too much work. And here we are with sheet piles, which is the perfect happy medium between the cost, but also giving that natural feel as well, where we can keep the sandy bottom, but hold that shape. Cool. How many acres is this portion of? 20. It's 20 acres. 20 acres. Cool. This is amazing. This is the actual site where the ponds will be. This is the greenhouses here. Oh, the greenhouses. Greenhouses. Wait, so are they going to be bigger than the one you already yes. have? Yes. And you, how many are you putting in? Two. Two greenhouses. Yep. How big? These are 252 by 42. And one will be for tortoises. One will be for crocodiles. So I have a white film for the tortoises, which will actually keep it cool. Okay. And then I'll have the, the uh, clear roof for the crocodiles to warm it up in there. Yeah, Because as amazing. you know, we'll put a lot of the tortoises like cooler weather right. as far as the summer heat in Florida. Got it. So the red foots, the Burmese blacks will be in there and it'll stay far cooler. It'll, be a, it'll yeah. be a shade house. And, and of course you can adjust and open and close exactly. the greenhouse. So what, we'll do, what I'll do most likely is have it where it cracks open a foot or two foot. So they'll have bands of areas where they can bask, but the, the majority of it is for cooling. Yeah, I, 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 we have to call this the field of crocodile dreams. Like if you yeah. build it, they will come. This Reptile is, dreams, <laughs> actually. This is Reptile where the, dreams, right. And this is where the greenhouses are gonna go, and this is where the enclosures are gonna go. So what oh, okay. we're doing here is we're pulling all the topsoil off because it's not good to, to really build on top of, um, and we're getting down to the sand. So the sand's more stable, is that it, yep. Steve? The sand's more stable. You don't want to have a layer of organics under the under the building pads. Um, you know, as the roots decay and whatnot, you can get set on one at settlement and on one at, um, you know, water retention under there. So are you guys going to bring fill in? We are. Yeah. yeah. So we're, okay. we're actually saving all this. This is really good top, so I don't know if it was natural here or someone actually brought this in at one time. But what we'll do is after we get all our, our fill in, uh, we'll top dress the ground with this pure rich soil for 
you know, all his plantings and, and you know, the grass and the animals will actually, you know, be on top of this soil that's, that's been here. That's amazing, man. Uh, it's it's amazing, guys. Like, I obviously, I've been privy to a lot of what's been going on. Kyle's been sharing with me um, as it's been going. But it's exciting now because you guys are finally working. These guys are finally, the design has been done. That took forever. Uh, and Kyle's not the most patient human being on earth. <laughs> but, like, things are, things are really taking shape. Uh, that's exciting. So we're going to be documenting this whole process. Oh, for sure. You know, we're going to be coming back. It's a saga, if you will, on the channel. Um, and something else I just want to point out, uh, the property also has uh, native wetlands to it. So there are already, uh, what you found, a rattlesnake here? Oh, rattlesnake, you found, yep. I mean, how, baby gators are wandering through. We are in a really cool area. And the other reason Kyle has been very conscientious, as Steve, about creating these uh, really strong infrastructure here is to, you know, keep these animals contained. Uh, we don't want to have any issues with feral animals or any, anything like that, and that's what they've done. It's, it's amazing. Um, We're almost making this where it'll withstand a Category 5 with the walls, the sheet pile, everything will right. we'll handle Category 5 hurricane. So even if the fence blows down, there's still a wall that they'd have to get over to get out. Right, and, and then two sets of walls. And then the entire property is fenced. So there's a lot going on here, guys. I, but, I have a question. How but, many of those man-made crock ponds are you gonna make? Are more than one of them? Oh yeah. We have we're gonna do five right here, four smaller ones up there, and then we'll probably do we're again, we're thinking of some crazy ideas that for example, Orinoco crocodiles, they are very, they're river crocodiles. So we're actually thinking of doing a river system with the sheet piles and have a pump that flows oh, where it's a cool. literally, literally a river system. That so we'll do that crazy. up there. So again, we'll do the 500 by 30, 130 by 48. We'll do four of the 110 by 45. We'll do a big Cuban enclosure over there. So we'll do at least a dozen, I'd say. And, and the cool thing also is, you know, guys, um, the whole reason um, that this is being done for Kyle and the other sanctuaries so that we can work with zoological institutions mm -hmm. uh, to be able to really create places for their offspring that we can then raise up and hopefully create assurance colonies and the goal is to get these animals hopefully back into stable natural uh, where the country of origin is mm -hmm. back into the wild so these animals will have a future in the wild as well uh, it's gonna take people like Kyle, like you helping support all this out there on YouTube. Uh, contractors like Steve who are learning a lot about biology as we go. <laughs> and um, you know, it's gonna take all of us coming together, zoos, private citizens, you guys out there to really save what we have on Mother Earth. Uh, and without getting too granola, it's pretty awesome, dude. So okay. I just wanted to say thanks to Steve for dropping in on the video and your hard work. Of course, Kyle, you're gonna be seeing more of this. If you guys like what you're seeing, you wanna get involved, Head over to the Patreon, um, go to patreon.com slash Camp uh, Support the videos, we're bringing you education. We're also gonna be doing our sanctuary together. Yep. You guys are gonna be able to help us out. Uh, and that's gonna be for you, so don't forget, you join up, you'll be able to take tours, see what we're up to. Uh, and then finally, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Thanks so much for your time, I'm even busy. <laughs> He's my buddy, and I gotta beg to see him nowadays. I haven't seen him in a long Lots time. Lots happening. Lots going on, so we'll be bringing it to you. We'll talk to you later. See you guys.